Here we go now. A.J. Preller is the uh, orchestrator of that Padre NL West playoff team in 2020. The 60-game schedule won a series, which is significant. And, of course, the Dodgers lose, but the Dodgers end up winning the, in the uh, World Championship. A.J. says hello on this Monday show. A.J., it's a pleasure. How are you today, pal? Okay? Good, Chris. How you doing? Good to have you, Bordo. What do you do for an encore? I mean, it's sort of a tricky offseason. We don't know exactly where we are with the sport. Uh, but you got a very, very good team there, but you also got to worry about Clevenger with the, uh, being out. What's the f immediate plan here as far as the winner is concerned in 2020, 2021? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, really the last few years, but even leading up to the deadline, I think the, uh, you know, the points of those moves and, and the buildup was to have a group that we felt was, uh, was sustainable and, and something through, uh, you know, for the next, uh, the next four or five years that we had uh, the foundation of, of a good club. And, you know, I think in general, I think I think for us this offseason, biggest part is, is just like focus on the guys that are in house and continue to build off of last year. Um, you know, we were I think one of the one of the two or three youngest teams in the game, and I think we had the second best record in the National League. So uh, we understand that that really doesn't guarantee anything for next year's success. Uh, but 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 ultimately, we feel like we have a lot of a lot of guys you know here in the organization, both at the major and minor league level, that we're we're looking forward to seeing their growth over the next couple of years and uh, continuing just to try to get better overall as a group. All right, pitching, obviously, the aforementioned Clevenger. Paddock kind of dropped off a little bit last year. I mean, I mean there are, there's going to be a million pitchers to choose from, but, I mean, I know the finances for all these teams is somewhat shaky. What's the game plan there? What can you tell me? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, like you mentioned, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, we, we have a lot of guys, whether it be Lamette, Davies, Paddock, um, you know, that, uh, that, that we feel good about. We had a deep bullpen last year. And, and, and the other thing for us that's really exciting is we've got uh, some younger pitchers, uh, some of whom got to the big leagues in the last year or so, got a taste of it, um, you know, that I have been, been, uh, been highly acclaimed that we like quite a bit. So, you know, I think last year we saw, you know, Adrian Mori Hone, um, you know, I think Luis Patino, Ryan Weathers to different degrees, you know, affect our club. Uh, we feel like we have more guys coming in the minor league system. So, you know, again, I think we've got uh, we've got a lot of different ways we can go, but uh, you know we've talked about it a lot over the years. We feel like some of the internal pitching options, uh, seeing them get to the big leagues and develop, that's going to be a big story for us in the, the 2021 season. And I know a little change in ownership uh, with uh, Mr. Fallow leaving a new guy in. Uh, that obviously is going to affect that front office. Uh, does it uh, change the uh, regimen about how you guys are going to do that? What's the story as far as the front office is concerned? With Fallon out and a new guy in, what can you tell me there? Let me hear. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, you know not 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 really a new guy. You know Peter Seiler and Ron Fowler, they've been uh, you know been the, the the two faces of ownership for us. And um, you know I think from my standpoint, uh, a lot of communication with both guys over the years. Um, and I, I think I think with Ron, um, you know me and Ron work very closely together. Uh, but I think from for, for him, you know he decided that uh, he wanted to take a step back still be involved in on the baseball side in some different areas, um, you know, with major league baseball and with the organization probably changes more on the day to day side of things for me, like in terms of communication, big picture wise, no real change. I mean, I think, uh, you know, both Ron and Peter, they love baseball. They understand the game. Um, I mean, I think their vision is to try to build something that's sustainable for a decade of success and, and do it the right way through scouting, through development. Um, and, and nothing, nothing really changes with, with Ron, um, you know, kind of taking a step back from the day-to-day -day role and, and, and Peter assuming more more on that side of it. So it, it's, uh, you know, I, I think for us it's pretty much business as usual. All right, very good there. Uh, DH, whether we have it or not, does that change the focus of how you take care of the ball club here in the next couple of months? N not really. I mean, I think we had, uh, we had the one decision with Mitch Moreland picking up his option, I think, uh, you know, at the earlier part of the offseason. But in terms of our club, I think we – you know, take pride in being flexible. I think we, uh, you know, adapt, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, don't get too hung up on what the rule is going to be. Um, you know, I think from our standpoint, we like versatile players and guys that can do some different things. And, you know, ultimately just kind of waiting to hear what that word is and understanding that, that, you know, he, he, however it comes out, we'll be ready to play and, and we'll have a roster that will reflect that. All right, two closers, Rosenthal and uh, Yates. How are you going to handle that? I mean, you got to bring one of them back. Have you had negotiations? What can you tell me there? Yeah, I, I think up to this point, you know, with uh, with Kirby and Trevor, it's uh, we, we we do check in. 
uh, fairly regularly with, uh, you know, with, with their representatives, uh, just kind of getting the lay of the land. And I think we're, we're still at that point trying to figure out what the best combination is for our club. So we have our budget. We understand what we're trying to do. Um, and there's a lot of different ways we can go. I think both guys are, you know, they, they, they've obviously been two of the better closers, Trevor, this past year and obviously over the last five or six years. Um, and then Kirby really leading up to this year over the last three years, being as good as almost anybody in the game. So, um, you know, we respect their ability, their talent. Probably the biggest thing is both guys individually, like the, the people they are. They're guys that you want to have in your clubhouse. Uh, but we'll continue having those conversations over the course of the next few weeks, a month, and see if we can line up on something. Uh, what do you do, AJ, as far as your data goes from the 60 games? Do you throw it out and say it was kind of a weird year, whether a guy was great or bad? Do you look at it and, and go with it as sort of as, you know, what the norm is? Very tricky of how to use the 2020 component with the season to figure out what you want to do next year and what you can re rely on and not rely on with players. How do you handle that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you take, take it for what it is. I mean, obviously, it was a, it was a championship season. It was a competitive season. So, you, you, you know, there's, there's evaluations that are constantly going on. You're using, you know, data, information, video, um, people being at the games to get a feel for, uh, you know, to get a feel for where, where players were at, et cetera. But it's also two months, you know. I mean, you look up and, you know, somebody had a good two-week stretch and, uh, you know, that, that, that kind of made their season. So, I think you factor all those things in. Overall, though, I think, you know, I have a lot of faith in our scouts and our coaches. They, they understand players. They understand talent. They understand the underlying components that, uh, that go into evaluation and go into whether guys are being successful. We're relying on a lot of the same things we've relied on the last few years and, um, you know, hopefully make some good decisions. Well, listen, you had a great season. I mean, you know, the pitching, you had those injuries in the postseason, which hurt an awful lot. Uh, and you're not going to have Clevenger back. I know you signed him, uh, so you're optimistic he can get through that Tommy John. Uh, I would think if, you know, a couple of young pitchers, I know you have them in the minor leagues, you mentioned it, if they, uh, you know, mature, uh, you, you know, with that lineup, you have a very good offensive team. I mean, I know the Dodgers are sitting there, but you will be regarded as a postseason team in predictions come March or April. I would think you would agree with that, right? Yeah, every year is different, you know, so I think we go in uh, understanding that, you know, I think I think all of us, like, you know, I think we felt like, you know, I think it's easy to look and say, hey, if Clevenger and Lamette were healthy at the end of the year, what would have happened? Uh, but ultimately, you know, the Dodgers are the best team. They were, you know, I think they showed that they're, uh, they were the class of baseball, um, you know, and I think we understand we've got to get better. And, you know, I, I think for us, um, you know, having a good position player core that helps like with the development of the young pitchers potentially, a you know, good defensive club. Um, you know, I think we're gonna have a good pitching staff. So, you know, and I think, I think, again, I think that was represented at the end of the year and some of the awards, you know, whether it was MVP rookie of the year, comeback player of the year, Cy Young, manager of the year, um, you know, gold gloves, um, you know, there were Padres that were being mentioned. And I think that talks to a, to a team that's well-rounded and hopefully that'll serve us well here this year going forward. Uh, last thing, A.J. Tatis, uh, you know, I'm sure, listen, he's, get, he, he's the guy that you definitely would like to see become sort of Mr. Padre. I think you do everything you can to get him signed. Maybe you can think about down the road in center field. Give me a little rundown on him. A, uh, if there's a chance to, you know, lock him up, get up, buy up a year or two of free agency. And could you see a positional change down the road and put him in the outfield, center field, where his athletic ability will take over? Give me some thoughts there. Yeah, I mean, I think with uh, with with Fernando, he had a, you know, obviously had the great rookie year, had, you know, burst on the scene, um, you know, super exciting player, talented, and everything like that. And you know, I think this year probably the most exciting part for us was that uh, that he built on it. Yeah, he didn't come in and you know rest on his laurels and and you know say hey, I finished you know high in the rookie of the year voting or you know got this thing figured out. I think his his background, who he's about, it was well, let's get back to work and let's go get better and. I think when you combine great talent with work ethic and uh, you know some real intangibles, I think you uh, you have a guy that's uh, you know that that, that uh, you know for us is you know up there amongst the top players in the game. So he's a guy we'd uh, we'd love to see here for a long time. We're going to continue having those conversations. I think he loves being in San Diego, and and most importantly, he wants to win. You know, so uh, I think I think all those things lined up, and he's a very exciting player for uh, for everybody in baseball to watch. Fun, need him in the sport, no question. And it's always good to talk to you, AJ. Keep up the good work. Happy holidays. Thanks for a few minutes here. Chris, same to you. Thank you.